All right, in this video, we are going to go over four of the top Rust open source projects. I'm going to explain what's going on in these projects, go through the project structure, and attempt to make these more approachable for aspiring Rust developers and to help viewers learn a little bit more about Rust in general and a little bit about open source. The first repo that we're going to take a look at is EXA and it has been around for quite a while and it describes itself as a modern replacement for LS. You can check out the website but basically it lists the files just like LS does but you have other features such as seeing git information and you can see that the readme file has been modified and you don't need to have git installed in order to see this exa has git built in but the purpose of this is not a tutorial of exa or why you should use it even though you definitely should the idea here is to go through the project so here in the master branch with this project and many others, you have this .github folder. And this is where you put your GitHub workflow files. And so that is not specific to Rust, but you can take a look at that and see how those work. But they're just YAML files that you can use for various GitHub actions, usually having to do with deployments and running tests and builds, etc. But you can really use them for just about anything. Completions. So a lot of these command line utilities are going to include completions for various shells. So for Zish, Fish, and Bash, you take this file and you drop it in to wherever you keep your completion files for your particular shell. So for Zish, you might have a manager like oh my Zish, and you'll drop this exa files where they tell you to put them for completions. And so just follow the instructions for your particular completions. You can also just set a completions directory and put the file in there and tell Zish where it is. So again, this is beyond the scope of Rust, but that's what that is. So if I went here and hit tab, you can see the different options I have there. Okay. Going back out, we're going to jump back up to dev tools here. Like any good command line utility, you're going to have man pages. You have markdown files for your man pages. And so if I was coming here and I said man exa, you can see here that is what is kept in these files. Not specific to Rust, but good to know. You definitely want to include man files with any CLI application. Okay, Snap, that is a package manager for Linux and they're just keeping their configuration here for it so it can easily be used by snap and you'll see a lot of these in order to support various platforms you're going to get a lot of different types of things like that here is the source code x tests here this folder has its own readme which is always nice when you're doing a repo to add readmes to folders that have a lot going on and you can see that the tests that they are using have a runner called spec sheet and the tests are actually spelled out in these toml files and run with each change and so you can check out spec sheet and how these get configured but for instance if you wanted to see the tests for running the git command that i did earlier you can see here you have the name what goes into the shell standard out standard error so on and so forth and this verifies that each time someone makes a change that the tests pass you haven't broken these things or if you add new functionality then you're adding new tests here get ignore you probably know that's where you'll put various files and folders using globbing syntax of what not to include so you'll have various things that get created locally such as your target where your compiled binary goes and other things and you don't want to push those to the repo and those go into your git ignore all right and your rust format toml is just telling 
Rust format how you want your Rust formatted. And you can see all they have here is just disable all formatting. So there you go. Travis, as you probably know, is a popular continuous integration tool that was even more popular before GitHub Actions started offering most of the same functionality, but there is still a lot of Travis running out there. Cargo Lock is a snapshot of exactly what versions of packages are being used at this exact moment with this code in the exact state it is at the time that you're going to grab it. And that is why, just like with the package lock in JavaScript, you want to check in your cargo lock so that when people install the package, they're going to get the same exact experience as you. It's not going to go out and grab new versions or old versions or do anything else weird or unexpected. You're going to get the proper and expected package versions. Cargo Toml is where you will keep your listing of different cargo packages that you'll be using. And this is pretty much critical information for anyone working in Rust projects. And this is similar to your package.json in JavaScript. This just file is for a task runner called just, which is an application that attempts to make make files easier. License, you know, read me, you know, vagrant file. What is that? Well, Vagrant is a way to create portable VMs, the build RS file. So if you want to run some things before you build your crate, then you put a build RS file in the root of your project, and this will run before your crate is compiled. All right. And then these dev tools are here. For instance, this one creates the file system for running the tests that we saw earlier. So it needs a file system in a little VM to actually execute those tests against. And this builds the file system. And here you have some fixtures for that and different bash scripts here to do what you need to do as a developer and run these scripts, you know, setting up your dev environment and that sort of thing. Okay, so that is Exa. Moving on from Exa, Rip Grip. Rip Grip is very popular and in many cases required by other projects such as NeoVim Telescope and others because it's a up-to-date, much faster version of the grep that's probably on your system and it works really nicely. And so I'll just show you what that does. So if I go rip grep and map here in my code smell dots, you'll see I instantly get back a ton of results from my various dot files where I used nmap. All right, but let's walk through the project here. So this dot cargo folder is here and has a config toml file for dealing with a windows issue so you'll see a lot of that there's a lot of it does all these things and then we have this special case for windows and of course each type of system is different whether it's bsd based or linux based or windows mac os you'll often see that there's a few extra hoops for windows to work but windows and rust are best friends now so everything is all good but you will see stuff like this. The .github folder you know, bench suite, the name is fairly telling, but these are the different benchmarks that were published to talk about how much faster rip grip is compared to other grep applications out there. And so those are published here to take a look at and run if you wanted to for yourself. CI, continuous integration, so you can see here that you have your Mac OS packages, Ubuntu, Debian, etc. So these are just different things that have to run in order for these to get pushed out. All right. And you saw this with Exa. Same here. Completion, RG. Drop this in wherever your completions are saved. And then you will get RG... And there you see, you get your completion when you hit tab. And so you just need to drop this particular file into wherever your completions are stored and resource 
your shell. All right, now we have crates. And these are member crates for this particular workspace. And you might say, well, what the heck does that mean? Well, if you look down here in the cargo Tomo file, we see the workspace members. You can see that these are the different crates that are workspace members. Now, you might also say, that's great. What the heck is a workspace? So if you were to go out to the cargo book and take a look at these things, a workspace is a collection of one or more packages that share a common dependency resolution, output directory, and various settings such as profiles. So easy enough to check that stuff out. These are the docs that get generated. You can generate those. Cargo doc help. And you can see here, rip grip is a bad example because rip grip is not a library. The documentation is all here. Here is where you have the homebrew Ruby file. And this is for Mac users who want to brew install rip grip. This is the formula right here. Then you have various scripts and this is just copy examples. Tests. This will go through and run the different tests and you can see it'll run the command with different arguments and assert that the proper results are returned. Gignore, you know, change log obviously shows the changes each time there's a release. So last time on June 12th, and you can see last month, June 12th, so a little more than last month, but obviously the change log was updated. Copying from six years ago, cargo lock, obviously locks your package versions in place. Here's your package manifest. All right, and cross toml here is used to create different targets using a crate called cross and you can see here that the maintainers are creating an image for the different types of linux here frequently asked questions guide more homebrew formula stuff that's just a link license readme release checklist and as discussed with the exa repo the build.rs file is there to run any tasks that you want to run before your crate is built and of course rust format toml and in this case they want to max with the 79 and small heuristics set to max okay and so that is rip grep all right next up is delta and this is a viewer for git and diff output it is wonderful you definitely want this seems like a ton of people are using it and just to show you what this does really quick here if i just do gd for git delta i can see that i'm updating just the date that i last updated my current setup and so this just shows the diff there that's all that does there's obviously different arguments that you can pass to it and do different things and you can point between different branches, different versions of files and things like that, just like any git diff tool. But Delta is wonderful. And again, you have your GitHub folder, the homebrew formula. Here you have the etc. folder with a bunch of stuff in it, assets, examples, and different things like that. Different scripts, that sort of thing. The source, the tests, and here, these tests are in the form of a bash script. See, trick getting Delta into invoking their pager. Okay. So these are just tests for running Delta. Get attributes. And so, for instance, you can set something to be a binary or to not be diffable. Get ignore, you know, contributing if you want to contribute. Cargo lock, you know, cargo toml, you know, license, make file. So in this case, they're not using the just file, they're using a make file. Then here they're offering different themes. And if you went through the documentation, you can see what that was for. So this is pretty straightforward. All right. And finally, bat. So bat is just like cat, only you get nice syntax highlighting and pretty colors and a little bit more functionality than you do with cat. And so it's really nice. Also, if you use 
FZF in your terminal and you use the previewer to look at files before you select one. Bat is one of the options you can use to preview files in FZF and it's very nice. And here again, GitHub file, assets, and here you have your completions. So basically when they go through and add functionality to Bat, then they are updating the completion file. All right, and diagnostics, it's just a shell script to go through and run your diagnostics. I believe this is used for if you're having a problem with Bat and you post an issue, they're gonna tell you to run the diagnostics. Also, it's, I believe documented for you to run it in order to troubleshoot things. Here is the doc folder that we talked about that gets generated for the cargo documentation. And then an examples folder, which is often included, that'll kick off Bat and do stuff with different input and show you the output. So you can run the examples to get an idea of what Bat does. The source files, of course, and then tests. So naturally, if you're going to replace a major tool like Cat with Bat, then you want to do a better and make sure that you have a lot of tests covering all kinds of different things. So you have your benchmarks and the snapshot tests, integration tests. And of course, you can see that these tests run Bat, pass different arguments in and assert whether they're success or not. And so obviously if you were to come in to this project and add some sort of new argument, some new option, and you broke one of these tests, that would be a problem. You need to go and fix that. And then of course, for your new functionality, if you're adding say a new option, then you're going to need to add a test, hopefully more than one test to test your new option and make sure that your new option works and also that you have not broken anything else. Get ignore, you know, get modules is if you're using sub modules in the project, which you might just be change log. Obviously you're going to see that when you have releases, generally, then you're going to have a change log for there's repos that don't do releases. Then you probably won't see a change log. And like most open source projects, they want contributing and cargo lock, you know, cargo toml, you have your license stuff, read me. And again, the build RS, which of course will run anything that you want to run before your crate is compiled. This has been four top Rust project repos. I hope that this helps you understand a little bit more about the Rust ecosystem and what goes into a Rust project. A lot of focus goes into oh, how do I do a loop or what's a trait. None of that does you any good if you don't know how to put it all together into an actual professional level project and get into the engineering side of it. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time with more fantastic content.